I'm Bill Dubois, and I work at the Rochester Institute of Technology in the School of Photographic Arts and Sciences. I'm a professor here, and I teach architectural photography as well as a variety of other courses. My work that will be appearing on this site is primarily from my architectural background. The architectural photographer works for a variety of people. We, of course, work for architects, interior designers, contractors, and many times there are government contracts that call for us to do periodic uh, documentation of buildings and building sites. But to be a good architectural photographer, I think a person needs to understand, one, architecture, two, what makes an architect tick, and three, perception of image space on a two-dimensional plane. Understanding the architect means that you need to be a human person, that you understand people and can talk with them freely to understand their ideas and projections of what they hope your photographs will say. Understanding architectural space is the technology of lenses and capture angles versus human space and making an image look like you can visually walk through it even though it's not generally set up the way the room is all the time. An example here would be a boardroom where in the photograph you have moved the boardroom chairs away from the table to give some space for a person to be able to move through that space and sit down in a chair. You also don't want it to look like the chairs are holding up the table. So again, understanding the perception of the space and placing that on a two-dimensional plane is very important. First thing I do is start taking light meter readings for their levels so I understand the brightness of each light source relative to what my sensor or film will capture. If the light source is out of range, either too dark or too light, we must vary the exposure of that source so that it will record effectively on either a sensor or film-based material. We then look at color temperature and realizing that daylight will come in at approximately 55 to 5600 degrees Kelvin. Tungsten or quartz lamps will come in at approximately 3200 degrees Kelvin. And of course the typical 100 watt light bulb in your living room light sources is burning in around 24 to 2800 degrees Kelvin. To have all of these light sources in one scene record effectively looking accurate on your sensor or film, you must understand color differences between those light sources and be able to filter them accordingly. I feel that the architectural photographer must support the architect and if there are can lights in the ceiling as an example you want to show the effect of that funnel shaped light coming down the wall and not overpower it with your carried in light sources now in order to balance or color correct light sources I will use filters for individual exposures on each light source another example I go into a room that has tungsten illumination and also has large windows having daylight coming in. Two very different color balances of light source. First thing I will do is establish the setup of the room and then pick the time of day that we wish to have the daylight recorded outside and turn all interior lighting off and record that daylight scene out the windows. Without moving the camera, the film, or the sensor, we will then wait for Mother Nature to turn the daylight off and bring up all of the interior lighting. In this case, we're saying that it's all tungsten, and I will filter on the camera to bring that light source into the same color balance that my camera is set for. I will then record that scene, and if I'm on film, that one sheet of film is taken to the processor. If I'm capturing digitally, 
I will need to blend those two images together through Photoshop. As I work with my students uh, here at RIT, uh, I try to keep things at a minimum level because they're not operating with a lot of cash in their hand to go out and buy equipment at this point in time. Our photo facilities, however, have a lot of strobe and tungsten light sources that students can check out. But even with that available to them, I try to keep things to a minimum. I ask students to work with a very simple flood lamp in a simple hardware store reflector to paint with light and open shadows in multiple exposure situations, as well as using blue bulbs at times to open shadows in a daylight scene if they can determine that that's what's necessary. As far as strobes are concerned, I will use a, a couple. Uh, I have two, what I call the potato masher style of portable flash on-camera systems that I will use many times to open shadows with multiple flashes during a long exposure session. You can pop that strobe a variety of times while moving it to paint with strobe illumination. As far as being able to bring in a full bank of lighting and soft light a room in order to open the shadows and bring it up near the highlight lighting levels, I would suggest no more than two generators and light sources, uh, maybe four heads, two generators, and a variety of reflectors and other means to soften that illumination. Now, I really enjoy, as a photographer, the problem-solving challenges. If I have a very small room and I want to record that total room, I will need to use effective wide-angle lens positions. In large spaces, many photographers feel that those are the most difficult. I actually like that challenge because I like moving through the scene while the lens is open and painting that scene with light to, in order to increase light levels in some areas so that shadows don't go too dark. So the bigger the scene, the easier it is to problem solve because you can actually work in the scene in front of the camera if you keep moving fast enough to not record. Typical uh, happening is I get a call from an architect asking for us to photograph a building. They then give us a, uh, a room list or site list that they might like uh, the president's office, the boardroom, the entrance lobby, and two exteriors of a building. I will then go out to that site with my 35 millimeter either film-based camera or a digital SLR, and I will set that film or camera sensor to record only daylight exposures. I will then walk through the spaces that the architect has called for and photograph every viewpoint and as many lenses as possible to be able to show them as many viewpoints and room selections in as many ways as possible. The client will ask us to shoot a particular viewpoint, say from the door or from the president's side of the desk, but we will go beyond that to show them what we think are interesting viewpoints that they may not have thought of or even focused on even though they designed that space.